In today's video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about hyperlinks in HTML and how to link between pages within a page and how kind of a hyperlink works, a quick primer on URLs, some best practices, how you can actually link to email somebody. If that doesn't make sense, it'll make more sense once we get to it and all that sort of stuff. So everything you need to know about hyperlinks on the web. So first off, we're going to use the Mozilla Developer Net Network web docs here. I find it to be a great resource and they have a great article on this. So for this, they mentioned hyperlinks are really important. They are what makes the web a web. And what they mean by that is the web allows you to link to a bunch of different places and is a hub for all these resources on the internet. And Without that ability to link from one resource to another resource or one website to another website, it really wouldn't be a web of these resources. So links allow this. And this article kind of shows you how they work. So what is a hyperlink? Well, hyperlinks are one of the most exciting innovations the web has to offer. If you buy this sort of thing, exciting. And they've been a feature of the web since the beginning and are what makes the web a web, as I just mentioned. Hyperlinks allow us to link documents to other documents or resources linked to specific parts of documents or make apps available at a web address. Almost any web content can be converted to a link so that when clicked or otherwise activated, the web browser goes to another web address or URL. Note, a URL can point to HTML files, text files, images, text documents, videos, audios, or anything else that lives on the web. If the browser doesn't know how to display or handle that file, it will ask you if you want to open the file or download the file. And then it goes on. For example, the BBC homepage contains many links that point not only to multiple news stories, but also different areas of the website itself login, registration, other tools, and more. And as you can see on this example website here, you can go to like this news tab, this sport tab, this weather tab. All of these are links within this individual website. So it's not just linking from website to website, but it's linking from within websites. And you can also link on a certain page in which if you're at the top of the page, you could click a link and it'll automatically scroll you to the bottom of the page. And we'll show you how that works here a little bit later on. So when looking at the anatomy of the link, a basic link is created by wrapping the text or other content inside an A element and using the href attribute, also known as a hypertext reference or target that contains the web address. So to create a link, you wrap this A element around the text that you want to be like the clickable part of your link. You would click on this text here and then you set this href attribute to the URL that contains the web address of where you want to navigate to. So this example here, this P tag, and then I'm creating a link to and then wrapping the Mozilla homepage in a a tag here with an href set to mozilla.org. This is going to take us to the Mozilla homepage. This is the link that's created with this HTML. So if I click on this here, you see that it navigates me to the Mozilla homepage here. Now you can also add supporting information with the title attribute. So you may want to add a title attribute. The title contains additional information about the link, such as what kind of information the page includes, or things to be aware of on the website. So here they have the same A tag here, wrapping the text that they want to link to, and they have their href here as normal, but now they set a title. And the title is, the best place to find more information about Mozilla's mission and how to contribute. And it says this gives us the following result, and hovering over the link displays the title as a tooltip. So if I hover over it here, what you're gonna see is, a little tooltip that says the best place to find more information about Mozilla's mission and how to contribute. So it shows kind of the title within this tooltip here. So kind of a neat little feature of links, which I don't think a ton of people actually take advantage of or actually use. Now here they note that a link title is only revealed on mouse over, which means that 
people relying on keyboard controls or screen touches to navigate web pages will have dis difficulty accessing the title information. If it's truly important, then you should present it in a manner that will be accessible to all users. Now, you can make almost any content into a link, even block level elements. If you have an image you want to make into a link, use the A element and reference the image file with the image element. So here, to make this image right here a link, all we have to do is wrap it in this A tag. And then we give it an href, and then when we click on this image, it's going to take us to wherever this href points to on the web. Okay, now just for a quick primer on URLs and paths, they mention that to fully understand link targets, you need to understand URLs and file paths. And they mention a URL or uniform resource locator is a string of text that defines where something is located on the web. For example, Mozilla's English homepage is located at this URL here. And then URLs use paths to find files. Paths spe specify where the file you're interested in is located in the file system. So when you use this URL here, you are literally accessing a file path on a certain computer or a certain server. And depending on that path, it will depend on what file you serve to your web browser. So they say for an example directory structure, you can see that this directory right here. And they say the root of the directory is called creating hyphen hyperlinks. When working locally with a website, you'll have one directory that contains the entire site inside the root. We have an index.html file and a context.html file. In a real website, index.html will be our homepage or landing page. There are also two directories inside our root, PDFs and projects. So two different folders within our root directory there. They each have a single file inside of them, a PDF and index.html file. Note that you can have two index.html files in one project as long as they're in different locations. The second index.html would perhaps be the main landing page for project related information. So same directory. If you want to include a hyperlink inside index.html pointing to context.html, you would specify the file name that you want to link to because it's in the same directory as the current file. The URL would use context.html. So since it's in the root directory here and we don't have to navigate through the file system at all, it's already in the root directory, we can just use an href equal to context.html. Now, if you need to move down subdirectories and you want to include a hyperlink inside index.html pointing to projects forward slash index.html, you would need to go down into the projects directory before indicating the file you want to link. This is done by specifying the directory's name, then a forward slash, then a name of the file. The URL you would use is projects forward slash index.html. If we wanted to go into our projects directory and then access our index.html file and serve that page, we would use an href of projects forward slash index.html. Now, if we're in our root directory and we need to move back directories and we want to include a hyperlink inside projects forward slash index.html pointing to PDFs forward slash project brief.pdf, you would have to go up a directory level, then go back down into the PDFs directory. To go up a directory, you use two dots. So the URL that you would use would be dot dot forward slash PDFs forward slash projects hyphen brief dot PDF. And then to note, you can combine multiple instances of these features into complex URLs if needed. For example, dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash, so on and so forth. Okay. So a brief primer there on URLs, just to give you a better understanding of kind of how this all fits together. Now, they mentioned document fragments here. So it's possible to link to a specific part of the HTML document known as a document fragment. Rather than just to the top of the document, to do this, you have to first assign an ID attribute to the element you want to link to. It normally makes sense to link to specific headings. So this would look something like the following. We might have a heading that we set an ID called mailing address. And then if we want to link to this specific part of the page, 
we can use that ID within our href. So the way that we can do this is to link to a specific ID, you'd include it at the end of a URL preceded by a hash or pound symbol. For example, to link to this mailing address ID, to link to this specific part of the page here, we could use context.html, the URL, and then a hashtag mailing address. And when we click on this URL, it will take us to the context.html page, but then link to this specific H2 here. So we can link to different IDs that we have on our page using that pound sign symbol. And it says you can even use the document fragment reference on its own to link to another part of the current page. So if you want to just link within a page, say I'm at the top part of this page and I want to link to this document fragments hash here, like, like what I just did there, clicking on document fragments here, see how it moves it to the top of the page. If I want to do that within a page, then I don't need the first URL here. I can just set my href to whatever idea I want to link to. And that's going to tell your browser, hey, I want to navigate to this current page, but whatever element has this ID of mailing address. Now for absolute versus relative URLs, an absolute URL points to a location defined by its absolute location on the web, including its protocol and domain name. So this would include https forward slash forward slash www.example.com and then forward slash projects forward slash index.html. This would be the kind of entire URL here. This is the absolute URL. But a relative URL points to a location that is relative to the file you are linking from, more like what we've kind of looked at in previous examples. For example, if we wanted to link from an example file at https colon forward slash example.com to a PDF file in the same directory, the URL would just be the file name project hyphen brief dot PDF because this is a relative link. Okay, so those are absolute and relative URLs. And then for some best practices regarding links, it mentions use clear link wording. It's easy to throw links up on your page. That's not enough. We need to make our links accessible to all readers regardless of their context. So for example, screen reader users like jumping around the page from link to link and reading links out of context. Search engines use link text to index target files. So it is a good idea to include keywords in your link text to effectively describe what will be linked to. Visual readers skim over the page rather than reading every word and their eyes will be drawn to page features that stand out like links. So make sure that you use descriptive links. Okay, and then so for some other tips, don't repeat the URL as part of the link text. URLs look ugly and sound even uglier when a screen reader reads them out letter by letter. Don't say link or links in the link text. It's just noise. Screen readers tell people there's a link. Visual readers also know that it's a link because links are generally styled in a different color and underlined. Keep your link text as short as possible. This is helpful because screen readers need to interpret the entire link text. Minimize instances where multiple copies of the same link are linked to different places. This can cause problems for screen reader users. If there's a list of links out of context that are labeled, click here, click here, click here. And then it also says, use the download attribute when linking to a download. So when you are linking to a resource that's to be downloaded rather than open in the browser, you can use the download attribute to provide a default save file name. Here's an example of the download link to the latest Windows version of Firefox. So if you set the download is equal to Firefox latest 64-bit installer.exe, that's going to be the file name that this is downloaded as. So that can be a nice thing to do for linking to something that's going to download. All right. But now let's move to email links here. So it's possible to create links or buttons that when linked, open a new outgoing email message rather than linking to a resource or page. This is done by using an A element with the mail to URL scheme. So it's not a mail to attribute, it's a mail to URL scheme. In its most basic and commonly used form, a mail to link indicates an email address of the intended recipient. For example, they have this link right here. And they set the href is equal to mail to colon and then an email that you would want to send to. 
So they set the email as nowhere at mozilla.org. And then they say this results in a link that looks like this. Send email to nowhere. And they say, in fact, the email address is optional if you omit it and your href is mailed to. A new outgoing email window will be opened by the user's email client with no destination address. This is often useful as share links that users can click on to send an email to an address of their choosing. So if you set an href that has a mail to prepended to it here, it's going to open the user's email and get them ready to set an email. And if you want to set it to a specific email, you can set that after the colon here. And then if you just want it to open their email, you could just set this to mail to. And if I click on this, it would open my main email right now. And on top of that, you can also set like the CC, the body, the subject, and all of these in your kind of mail to attribute to where you can set the email. And then you can do a follow that with a question mark. So mail to this email, and then you followed by a question mark. It means you're going to add basically more kind of attributes to this. And then you're going to set the CC is equal to name to at rabidtables.com. And then you're going to set another with an and sign here. It's going to say, I'm going to set another kind of href attribute right now. And then you set the BCC and then another and signed. You can set the subject and another and signed here. And then you can set the body. So you could kind of pre-fill all these things for the email if you would like. So that is everything you need to know about hyperlinks for the web. I know it's quite a bit here, but I think this will be very helpful information for you to know when you're working as a web developer.